Good evening and welcome to the April 10th, 2023 meeting of the Town of Barnstable Planning Board. My name is Steve Robichaud. Meeting today is being held at Barnstable Town Hall, 367 Main Street, Hyannis, Mass, in the James H. Crocker hearing room, 7 p.m. And this meeting was noticed previously with the town clerk. I'll start by calling to order our meeting and introduce our board members and staff. Um, starting with Mary. Good evening, Mary Barry. And Ray. Good evening, Ray Sexton. And Bob. Good evening, Bob Twist. And Tim. Good evening, Tim O'Neill. And Michael. Good evening, Michael Messinas. And Jim. Good evening, Jim Kupfer, Senior Planner, Planning and Development. And Karen. Good evening, Karen Heron, Administrative Assistant, Planning and Development. Thank you, and again, my name is Steve Robichaud. Notice of recording, this meeting is being recorded and broadcast on Channel 18 in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. I will now inquire whether anyone else is taping, and if you are, please make your presence known. Seeing none, we will continue. Application materials may be accessed by contacting Karen Herond at karen.herond at town.barnstable.ma.us or calling 508-862-4064. The first portion of our meeting this evening is general public comment. This is public comment not related to any of tonight's agenda items. If there's anybody here this evening for general public comment, please make your way forward, state your name, and state your comments. Seeing none, we will continue to our first item this evening, which is an approval not required plan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, we have an approval not required plans. The Town of Barnstable has submitted an approval not required plan entitled Approval Not Required Plan of Land at 140 Old Oyster Road in Barnstable, Catuit, Massachusetts, Barnstable County. Prepared for the Town of Barnstable, Department of Public Works, prepared by JC Engineering Incorporated, dated October 14th, 2022. Thank you, Ray. And this is not a public hearing and therefore does not need a vote to open, close the hearing. Uh, we have the plans up on the screen. And uh, sir, if you could state your name and please present the information. Certainly, good evening. Uh, my name is David Anthony. I'm the director of asset management. I work out of the town manager's office. Uh, the plan you have before you is uh, the former Katuit Elementary School. It consists of about 13 and a half acres. When the school was closed in 2009 as part of a massive redistricting of the schools, there were four elementary schools that were closed. This one was leased by the school department for 10 years until 2019 to the Waldorf School, at which time a milestone in the lease allowed the school to discontinue that lease. Uh, they declared it surplus, turned it back over to the town of Barnstable. At that time, there was a subcommittee of the town council called the Asset Management Advisory Committee that had taken up this particular property so as to not let it go to um, waste, uh, to not let the building sit neglected for too long. Very early on during some public meetings um, by Zoom during COVID, we had uh, quite a good turnout from the village of Katuit over several meetings. And there were a number of ideas that were talked about as to what to do with this parcel, always thinking that this is the last and only space for open recreation in the village of Katuit. But the liability of the school and what was going to happen at that school was very important to the Katuit Fire District specifically as there is a well that is 800 feet downstream, 800 yards, excuse me, 800 yards just off property to the south or to the bottom of that map. So they began to work with the town to try to find a way to acquire the rights initially to determine what was gonna happen on that land. And eventually we struck upon the idea that the town would retain approximately five acres of recreation land with access off of Main Street in Katuit. And that the Katuit Fire District would acquire approximately eight acres, including the liability of the school at no cost. This was a savings to the taxpayers of the town by not having to demolish a school to the tune of about a million dollars. It also granted them the opportunity to control what was going to happen upstream to their well. The very reality is that with new technology and emerging contaminants, there is the possibility that this well could eventually have something found in it that would require a water treatment 
facility, and this is one of the last spaces in proximity to a well that the Katuit Fire District would have if in fact they needed a place to treat water in Katuit. So over the course of two years, we've met with a subcommittee of the Katuit Fire District to try to work out the details of this exchange, uh, recognizing that there's um, a real connection between the two. Um, we wanted to make sure that we maintained the recreational facilities. So we came up with a conservation restriction that was going to sit on the five acres once the approval not required was moved through so that they would have something to say about the activities that happened on all of the 13 acres to make sure that nothing messed with the well specifically. Uh, they will assume the liability of the school and of the eight acres once this approval not required uh, would be approved. So we are before you tonight to ask for that important step to divide the 13 acres into two parcels so that we can proceed with filing the conservation restriction and then also moving to town council for disposal of the remaining eight acres. Great, thank you very much for that and uh, appreciate staff's detailed staff report. Jim, do you have any comments to make on the staff report? I would just add that both, <clears throat> excuse me, access to both lot A and parcel B of adequate construction to provide for the needs of vehicle traffic so as adequate access and uh, I would recommend uh, endorsement of the plan. Thank you, Jim. Uh, now work through the board for comments, questions, concerns, starting with Mary. All set, thank you. And Ray. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a, a quick question. Uh, I know this is an ongoing um, issue uh, as far as the disposal of the property and then going forward. Uh, please, uh, I'm a relative newcomer, um, and so I'm still kind of catching up on some of the history, which mm -hmm. I appreciate. Has the property actually been transferred to the village or to the fire district, or is that still pending? Uh, so that would be still pending um, as the town will retain one of the pieces after the approval not required division and then we would transfer the balance to the Katuit Fire District. So until we are able to divide the parcel into two pieces, then we can affect the transfer of the appropriate eight acres. And that, uh, what we're talking about right now is uh, approximately five acres, correct? The town would retain the five acres that essentially are the ball field the tennis courts, and the entryway and driveway from Main Street. And then the additional eight acres, which includes the school, is um, to be determined when and where and how it's transferred, correct? Well, ideally, we would move that through town council rather quickly as the hope is that by the annual meeting of the Katuit Fire District, the very last day of May, that they would be in a position to be able to accept that eight acres if we can move it through town council and conservation commission, mm -hmm. which is another step. And at that time, then the, the fire district would then take on responsibility for maintenance uh, and whatever happens to the building. That is correct, sir. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Ray. And Bob? I'm good, thanks. And Tim? I'm all set, thank you. And Michael? I'm all set, thank you. Thank you, Michael. And I'm all set as well. Appreciate the detailed presentation. Um, at this time, we would seek a motion on this item. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to endorse the plan entitled Approval Not Required Plan of Land at 140 Old Oyster Road in Barnstable, Catuit, Massachusetts, Barnstable County, prepared for the Town of Barnstable Department of Public Works, prepared by JC Engineering Incorporated, dated 14 October 2022 as an approval not required planned. Thank you, Ray. And do we have a second on this motion? Second. Thank you, Michael. All those in favor? Mary? Aye. Ray? Aye. Bob? Aye. Tim? Aye. Michael? Aye. And myself, Steve Robichaud, votes aye. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda this evening is a special permit. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Bay Ridge Realty LLC has submitted a special permit application for 78 North Street, Hyannis, for 11 accessory parking spaces in connection with the redevelopment of 78 North Street to provide for 11 residential units of housing where 30 spaces have historically been utilized on the municipal lot across the street. This is a new public hearing, and if it's convenient, uh, Mr. Chair, I move to open the public hearing. 
Excellent, recognize that motion and look for a second on that motion. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Mary, and all those in favor, Mary? Aye. Ray? Aye. Bob? Aye. Tim? Aye. Michael? Aye. And myself, Steve Robichaud, votes aye. The hearing is open. And uh, now I have a presentation by the applicant. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. For the record, Michael Schultz on behalf of the applicant, Bay Ridge Realty, LLC. Uh, with me this evening, I have architect Kurt Raber and engineer Matthew Eddy. Uh, the application uh, before you this evening um, is a special permit that the applicant is seeking for accessory parking in connection with the redevelopment of the property located at 78 North Street in Hyannis. According to town assessing records, the property was developed in 1972 with an 11,600 square, 604 square foot building containing professional offices on approximately 0.16 acres of land. As you'll see in the plans that Matt Eddy will review with you momentarily, the structure of the property takes up almost the entire lot, rendering no space for on-site parking. Since its development in 1972, the property has utilized the municipal parking lot located directly across the street. In fact, uh, Mr. Eddy did own the property himself for 16 years, from 2005 until 2021 at which time the town had approval for up to 30 parking spaces for the professional offices that were utilized at the premises. Under the proposed redevelopment, the applicant is seeking to modify the existing structure to create 11 units of residential housing, which use would require 11 parking spaces, a reduction of 19 parking spaces from what was historically allowed at the municipal lot across the street. Uh, the modification of the structure uh, would allow for a number of benefits, including but not limited to greater conformance with the ordinance from what presently exists. Um, under the, uh, the new zoning office, professional use requires or would require for that size building 33 spaces. This use uh, would require 11. Uh, second, it would be consistent with the design and the infrastructure plan in that it would create housing opportunities for residents of all income levels. Um, it's located also within a walkable distance to the, um, the transportation hub um, and to downtown uh, Main Street in Hyannis. It would minimize curb cuts on North Street through use of shared parking. Um, and finally, the municipal lot where the uh, proposed spaces would be located, it's directly across the street. It's in a non-residential district and it's within 300 feet of the property itself. Prior to coming before you this evening, we were before site plan review in October, um, which we did receive approval. It was conditioned upon reaching a parking agreement with the town. Under the new zoning, in effect in the area, site plan review is not required. Um, but again, we did go through that process and vetted all of the comments at that time. Uh, the applicant would respectfully uh, request a special permit from this planning board this evening, uh, which special permit would be conditioned upon reaching a parking agreement with the town. We've been in active uh, negotiate or just talking to the town about you know what that would be, um, and we'll continue to do so. Um, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Matt and to Kurt to walk you through the plans to show you the project, and afterwards would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. All right. Oops. There we go. Good evening. Uh, for the record, Matthew Eddy, professional engineer with Baxter and I Engineering and Surveying. Um, and I would just like to uh, briefly walk you through the existing conditions plan and then the proposed site plan. Uh, Mike has hit on a, a lot of the highlights. It's a fairly straightforward project, I believe. Um, again, address 78 North Street, which was where I, my offices were there for almost 15 years. Uh, so I'm very familiar with the, with the site. Um, as Mike mentioned, the site's about uh, 0.16 acres. Um, built in 1972, the, the building you know, it entirely takes up the entire lot, basically, and the parking has always been across the street. Um, we actually were allowed up to 30 parking permits, which they, the town instituted the parking permits in that lot probably about five years or so ago, and so we were then allocated permits that allowed us, because right now the way the parking lot works is you can park six hours, and then after that, you get a ticket unless you have a permit. So we had the, the permits for our employees and et cetera for uh, using the uh, parking lot across the street for the building. So um, the lot has uh, about 60 feet of frontage on North Street. Uh, it's surrounded by um, uh, commercial and mixed commercial and residential space. 
Uh, the pub public parking lot that we're talking about uh, is to the south across uh, North Street, uh, to the south of the building. Um, there are obviously no environmental features on this lot. There's, there's basically no wooded areas. It's, it's pretty much impervious area and some, some lawn areas. Um, the new zoning district with the new zoning amendment is uh, Downtown Village. Um, the existing building footprint is about 4,030 square feet. Uh, and the site uh, existing impervious coverage is about 73%. Zoning allows, the current zoning allows 80% impervious coverage. Um, as Mike stated, there obviously is no uh, parking or, or access uh, on the lot itself. Um, and as we've discussed, uh, you know, the historically the parking's been across the street. Um, as far as utilities, the uh, building is currently connected to public sewer and public water. Uh, it has overhead electric um, and natural gas does exist in the road frontage, although the building isn't connected to natural gas at this point in time. Um, so for the proposal, it's actually going to be, again, being very familiar with it, I think it's going to be a, a great improvement to the building and for the area really an infill of what, you know, the town needs with the residential, as you all know, and I mean, I know most of the projects I'm working on now are a, you know, a lot of residential projects, infill, et cetera. Um, and I really think this is going to be a, a nice addition to that, and uh, which, you know, Kurt will walk through the architecture on it. I think it's really going to dress up the front of the building. Um, so there's 11 units proposed. If you're familiar with the front, this is what you're seeing here, up here right now. This is the, uh, the landscape plan, but on the, in the front of the building, Right now, there's an area well here and an area well here, which basically, it's kind of, the building's kind of a split level building. And so you walk in those area ways from outside and you can walk down in those area ways and that gets you to the lower level. And then your main existing entrance is here and you walk in there and then you walk up a half story to get to what we're calling the first level, but it's like a half a story up. Uh, so with the proposal, those area ways are gonna come out. Those are gonna be filled in going to create new landscape areas, landscape beds along the frontage. Uh, there's a current uh, um, portico over the entrance right now. That's actually going to get expanded just slightly and enclosed for a vestibule coming in. So now when you're coming into the building, you come through a door, you're in an enclosed vestibule, and then you're into the building. So it just helps with heating and cooling of the building. Um, the front walkway area is actually going to be uh, pulled out and reconstructed a little bit narrower than what it is. New materials, is, but it's still going to be eight feet wide, which is a nice walkway entrance. Uh, there's a large concrete pad that's here that used, has an old flagpole on it that's coming out. So again, all of those impervious areas are coming out. They're all going to become green space, new landscape areas and it actually decreases uh, the impervious coverage on the lot to about 70%. Again, it's a small lot, so it's a small reduction in actual square footage of impervious, but it is a reduction, so. <coughs> um, as Mike mentioned, with uh, 11 units under the new zoning, it's 11 parking spaces required, one parking space per unit. As I had mentioned historically, as the office uh, building uh, previously, it was actually allowed up to 30 parking permits, so it's gonna be you know, it's less than half the amount of uh, parking that will be utilized in that parking uh, lot across the street for the proposed use. Um, we've created uh, and enhanced the pedestrian circulation. Again, just, you know, dressing up the front entrance, but then we've also provided a uh, pedestrian access around the side of the building. And in the rear is a uh, where the refuse area is going to be. It's all fenced and screened. It's just, it's... Uh, tote, so you'll have one, you know, uh, the, the little trash tote on wheels for one for each unit. That's actually how we did the trash when when the uh, it was an office building when I was there, um, and then so that allows people to you know get back in here, and then the totes are brought out, and the trash pickup has always been along North Street, so the totes can be brought back out here and then put back in behind the uh, fenced uh, enclosure, so they're screened from view from every, for everybody. Um, as far as utilities, it's actually gonna get uh, a new uh, fire service. This, the building's currently not sprinkled, uh, so it will be uh, sprinkled with the residential use. It'll be a new fire service connection uh, for that. Uh, we've also proposed, there's a new uh, street light that's going in right adjacent to the uh, uh, sidewalk that leaves the building, and then it'll be adjacent to the sidewalk along North Street here, and that light is gonna be a nice, 
the kind of the antique style light that you see along uh, North Street and Main Street. Uh, the town requested that uh, during site plan review, so we're going to be providing, or the town has provided those specs for that light to match that style. So, again, I really think it's, it's going to be a nice dress up for the, uh, for the look of this building. Um, as far as drainage, there's some limited drainage on site, but we have actually uh, added some additional dry well on there uh, to uh, pick up the entire roof area, um, infiltrate on site. The, the, the lot's very level, um, very sandy soil in all of my years there. I never saw any issue with any runoff or drainage, but again, we've enhanced the drainage somewhat just to pick up the entire roof area. So. And then uh, landscaping, as I kind of mentioned, you know, we're infilling uh, those uh, areaways, uh, removing some of the hardscape, but then so in providing uh, foundation plantings, et cetera, and then we're providing two nice uh, street trees um, along the North Street uh, road frontage. Again, the frontage is only 60 feet wide, so it's really, it's going to, I think it's really going to look nice. I think it'll be a, a good addition and a good project for the town and kind of a good kickoff. I think this is the first hearing before you under the new zoning, is that correct? Uh, so, yeah, so it's, I think it's, you know, it's an exciting, exciting move here for the, for the town with this new zoning, I really think it is. Um, so with that, I am gonna pass it over to Kurt and Kurt can walk through the architecture in the building. Thank you. Good evening, my name's Kurt Raber and I'm a principal at Catalyst Architecture and Interiors in Yarmouthport. We're very pleased to be here working on this project. Um, I'm Again, familiar with the project of the building for many years because I would visit Matt in his office there. Um, but it's a great reuse of an of a, um, office building and converting it into housing right in downtown. I think it, it responds to exactly what the town and, and this board was looking for with the new form-based code. Um, I believe our plans, our architectural plans, were submitted in hard copy. Um, I don't think that they're on this PC, but I brought them with me um, if we want to put them up on the screen. Is that? Um uh, sure. Yeah. Um, so if you're familiar with the, the building right now, as, uh, as you view it from across the street or on, you know, as you pass by on North Street, quite a uh, different view with brick and dark bronze, plate glass windows, very commercial look from the late 60s, um, early 70s. Um, well, thanks. And so, um, as Matt mentioned, the, the only new footprint is the enclosed vestibule and um, gable end of the portico to cover the entrance. Inside the entrance would be mailboxes for the 11 units. Uh, again, it's just a very narrow site, fencing on both sides. Um, we included in our packages the existing layout of the building, so this is the lower level. And as Matt mentioned, on the right side of the drawing are the two areaways, which were kind of Second ways, yeah, um, into the basement, and there's large plate glass windows again into that lower level, which is set about four foot below grade. So again, it's a split level. So you kind of go in the building, go down, go up right away. So th that stair in the in the front is um, takes you up and down upon entrance. Uh, the first floor and the second floor. Again, there's the current front view, and we'll be taking out the majority of that plate glass window. And as you can see in the lower drawing, this is the west elevation faces the neighbor's parking lot next door. Uh, again, um, painted CMU block um, elevation with um, kind of typical fixed windows and hopper style windows with uh, through wall AC units. Similar on the uh, other side on the east, 
and at the top of the page is the rear of the building with no fenestration um, and a um, steel fire escape. Our proposed plan um, includes um, three residential units uh, on the grade level, or first lower level we're calling it, um, with a total of four bedrooms. The first floor, again, just a half story above grade, is four units with six bedrooms, meaning there's two, two bedroom units and two one bedroom units, and the same layout with a slightly different corridor on the uh, second level. Um, so for a total of 11 units and 16 bedrooms. We'll be rebuilding the fire escape on the rear of the building, which is the left side. And then here's our proposed elevations. So um, responding, in fact, the design sort of while the form-based code was being developed and, and, and processed kind of through its path in town. Um, but we did go back and look at, um, and the only thing that might be different would be if the building could be picked up and moved forward so that the front yard were, the, but everything else is um, compliant with the That new sounds one. easy, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, but it's not. And, um, but I, uh, um, shortly after that we kind of understood what the form-based code was looking for, we did go back and even calculate the fenestration. So we do have 18, a little better than 18% uh, fenestration and 15% is required in your new bylaw. Um, again, that lower level, that lower plant um, elevation at the bottom of the page is the street side elevation. And you can see up at the top, we're proposing a screen because this building will have 11 um, dedicated um, HVAC systems, one for each unit. It'll be all electric for heating and cooling. It'll be heat pump technology. And the outdoor compressor units will be rooftop. So they won't be in the alley or in the side yards or um, and nothing in the front yard. Uh, on the side elevations, we'll be replacing all of the windows with full-size operable double-hung windows. Um, and again, where the through-wall units, um, ventilation and, and heating units came through the sidewall, will be replaced with a solid panel. And we'll be repainting again all of the block. But the front side of the building and a return of around five feet on each side will be brand new um, clapboard. We'll be rebuilding the fire escape um, with a roof structure uh, to protect it from ice and snow. Um, so that's the uh, east side and the rear side being the north side. Um, pretty much that's it. Yeah, great presentation and um, very much appreciated. Anything to add before we uh, start uh, comments or comments? Oh, nothing on my end. Thank great. you very much. Okay. A very detailed presentation. Appreciate the three of you in your time. This is very satisfying to see, um, having you know been a part of the form-based code process from the beginning. This is what we hoped for, and uh, hopefully this will be the first of many. Um, you know the building looks great. I just wanted to mention a few things just to the board. You know for us, uh, our charge is simply a uh, special permit here tonight to um, give relief from 11 parking spaces down to zero. Um, you'll notice on the staff report, one of the conditions does mention um, an agreement, a parking agreement prior to occupancy. Jim, is that accurate? Yes, that's one of the recommended conditions is prior to, you know, occupancy and use of the residential use, some form of, you know, agreement or license or permit uh, um, could be conditioned. Great. So I think that's a useful condition. And, um, you know, I also wanted to add that, you know, this is a property that will have one deed restricted affordable. Is that correct? Great, beautiful. So great spot for housing and um, great to see in my opinion. So um, at this time, I believe we have an open public hearing. So um, why don't we see if there's any members of the public seek to speak on this this evening? Seeing none, um, I believe we can um, go to the board for questions, comments, concerns, Mary. Thank you. Um, just a quick question. Do we, do you have an agreement now with the town for the 30 spaces? Is that how that works now? Yeah, it's, I mean, as the office space, it wasn't, is not a formal agreement. The way that they, you know, kind of uh, instituted the parking permits when they initiated that, again, it was only five or six years ago. Um, we had to approach them and say, okay, hey, I got an office building here. When this was built, it was always used that parking lot 
and so we need to have parking permits. So they provided parking permits to like, you know, my, my building, and there's a few other buildings as well, that you know, you just, you would hang on your uh, rear view mirror, right. and it would allow your car to be there longer than six hours without getting a ticket, and that's all it was. It was based on, and that, you know, I had met with uh, Brian Florence on it previously when this kind of just all got initiated, and we talked about with the building being usable office space of like, you know, nine to 10,000 square feet, that's where the 30 parking spaces were coming from that were allowed. And I believe it's the change of use that's triggering the need for the special permit. Is that correct? That's correct. So, so this special permit would be, would be including the gym, which you had said, the the specific parking of eleven spaces as part of the permit. Right, and right. with a, with an agreement established uh, specifically for that with the town, because obviously with residential use, they'll be parking overnight. Right. That's really good. And then just my, um, is this an apartment yeah. complex that's yeah. going to be? Okay. Yeah. Rental, right? Okay. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. Great. Yeah, so essentially we would be granting relief to zero spaces under the condition that prior to people moving in, there'd be an agreement for parking in place. Right. Ray, your thoughts? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, a question, uh, is it uh, prudent to incorporate the staff's draft conditions into the motion to um, approve or deny, as the case may be? That's a great question. Just as a matter of uh, procedure, um, when and if a motion is made, um, that motion will read the findings and reference the conditions um, by stating as referenced in the staff report. And um, when that's made, it will be one single motion. I'm glad Bob has this one. <laughs> So We're in good hands. Ray just volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Go ahead, Ray. You're, you're the test pilots. You're the, you're the first in the door for this. I salute you. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, we'll see how this works. And uh, I know that Jim is going to keep a, a keen eye on how things go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well said, Ray. Thank you. And Bob? I'm good, thanks. Thank you, Bob. Tim? Uh, no, I don't have any um, questions. I just have one for Jim, quickly, that municipal lot across the street, uh, is it owned by the town of Barnstable? So uh, the North Street parking lot has mixed ownership, but there is a large percentage that is owned by the, the town of Barnstable. Oh, interesting. Okay. So the town could enter into it an agreement to um, do this in theory? Yes. Uh, and uh, speaking with the parking director, there are several other entities that have uh, parking permits mm -hmm. at that location and a few other municipal lots in the area. Okay. Um, that was it. I think this is a great project and a, a great redevelopment that is um, strongly needed for the area, and I'm uh, excited to see uh, this come to fruition out of the form-based code. I think it's a great thing. Well said, Tim. Thank you. Michael? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I uh, just want to say thank you so much for putting this together. Um, looking forward to see the whole building renewed, so I don't have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And I'm all set as well. So. Um, with that, I believe we can move to close the public hearing. Do I have a motion to that effect? Mr. Move to close Mr. the Chairman. Uh, public hearing. Thank you, Bob, in a second. Uh, sorry, Jim, go ahead. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to, um, if, if the board does choose to uh, move forward with uh, this permit, there's one um, suggested condition that is omitted that I, I would like for you to offer for consideration, and that is for the inclusionary housing unit that's, that has been discussed. Um, if, if the board agrees uh, to condition uh, the local initiative uh, program application, so the local action unit, uh, the, the affordable unit application shall be applied to the Department of Housing and Community Developments of the state uh, prior to occupancy, any occupancy permit for this uh, location and certainly interested in the applicants consideration as well. It's, it's one that I omitted at this, on the staff report, but I would offer for um, your consideration. Thank you, Jim. So just to restate that, uh, more simply, the affordable application should be in place prior to occupancy? Correct. The affordable application that is submitted to the Department of Housing and Community Development uh, shall be submitted and, and proof back to the planning board that it has been submitted prior to occupancy. That really gets the ball rolling for that one affordable unit uh, so that it's not, you know, not that I, I don't think that this applicant would do it, but just uh, that it's not left for the last second. So uh, that, that's all I would offer. Sure. No, that's a great one, and I'm certainly in favor of that. 
Um, we'll give Bob a minute. And you mentioned that entity is the housing. Say that one more time. So it's the Department of Housing and Community Development. They're the ones that will monitor our affordable count um, and it uh, manages the what's called the subsidized housing inventory, so the overall list of affordable units that we have in, in our community. And a copy of that would typically <coughs> be <coughs> tagged to the planning department. Right, so typically we would get a copy of, of that before or as it's going to the state, but just a condition so that you know, everyone's on notice there. I like it, great thought. Uh, Bob? Mr. Chair, could I inquire of, um, of Jim? Um, Jim, I'm adding on, on page three of the, uh, of the staff report a special condition number nine, and I'm gonna read what I think you told me and you can tell me where I got it wrong. Okay, so number nine, inclusionary housing condition, colon, affordable applications submitted to Housing and Community Development Department will be submitted, approved, and returned to the town of Barnstable before occupancy. So I would simply suggest, rather than the word affordable, we could just include LIP, so the abbreviation's LIP, so that's a local initiative program application. Okay. Um, and perhaps if the board is comfortable with it, uh, we could strike approved, so submitted. Um, and that the reason for that is, you know, locally we can't dictate how quickly the state uh, moves on these applications, so not to burden this applicant on, um, you know, the state's um, process. Uh, but just knowing that it is in the works and that they're moving prudently to get it executed. So then I'd also strike the language and returned to the town of Barnstable as well. Yeah, okay, good. Could I also just Great. say, just state that it's one, it's one unit, right? Yeah. Understood. Yes, so, thank you. Um, and um, just any- Did you say one dozen? <laughs> oh, yes. It's more than is in the building. <laughs> All right, right. <laughs> um, any comments to that? Are you comfortable with that? That is perfect. You, uh, you read my mind, Jim. Thank you. Great, yep. great. And um, prior to the motion to that effect, we'll just need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Thank you, Bob. And a second? Second. Thank you, Ray. And all those in favor? Mary? Aye. Ray? Aye. Bob? Aye. Tim? Aye. Michael? Aye. And myself, Steve Robichaud, votes aye. The public hearing is closed. And at this time, we would seek a motion on this item. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I, um, I move to approve with conditions special permit SP 2023-003 78 North Street with the following findings and conditions. With regard to the draft findings, I'm referring to page uh, two of the staff report dated uh, April 5th. Draft findings I propose are number one, the property location is 78 North Street, Hyannis, Mass, Hyannis, as shown on assessor's map uh, 309, parcel 192, in the downtown village zoning district and aquifer protection overlay district. Number two, the applicant and owner Bay Ridge Realty LLC seeks a special permit pursuant to section 240-1.5C2B is in Bravo. The applicant, the applicant proposes to enter into a parking agreement for offsite parking at the North Street lot where the previous commercial property historically parked their vehicles. Number three, the planning board finds that the issuance of the special permit is consistent with the design and infrastructure plan and that the develop, development meets the following criteria. A, creates housing opportunities for persons and households of all income levels. B, the development provides for the minimizing of curb cuts and driveways on North Street through a shared use for parking purposes with a nearby property. Four, the application falls within a category specifically accepted in the ordinance for the grant of a special permit. Section 240-1.5C2B allows the planning board to reduce on-site parking requirements by special permit. Five, after an evaluation of all the evidence presented, the proposal fulfills the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance 
and would not represent a substantial detriment to the public good or the neighborhood affected. Six, a site plan has been reviewed and approved by the site plan review committee. The conditions of informal and site, strike that, informal and formal site plan review shall be incorporated by references as conditions of this special permit. Seven, Lesser off-street parking is shown to be adequate given special circumstances, including A, supplementary parking provided off-premises through a parking license with a nearby property, and B, characteristics of use invalidating normal methods of calculating parking demand. Eight, the proposed repairs, alterations, and or expansion are not substantially more detrimental to the surrounding neighborhood. And Mr. Chair, I uh, also uh, recommend that we incorporate the draft conditions one through nine, nine being added just a moment ago, um, pen and ink, set forth on page three of the staff report dated um, April 5th, 2023. Do you mind reading nine one more time? Sure. Inclusionary, number nine, inclusionary housing condition. LIT application submitted to Housing and Community Development Department will be submitted to the, <clears throat> I'm sorry, will be submitted to the uh, Department of Housing and Community Development before occupancy. Thank you, Bob. And Jim? LIT. Peter. 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 and Papa. <laughs> LIP. And a second on that motion. And uh, if, I, go ahead. if I might, uh, Mr. Chair, go ahead. just two, uh, two minor comments sure. to the conditions, if I might. Uh, condition number five, as far as informal and formal site plan review, um, at the time, uh, looking back at that letter, it did re, um, one of the conditions with it, we were going through a regulatory agreement process. Um, so if we could modify condition number five to reflect that informal and formal site plan review conditions to the extent applicable under new zoning. Um, are hereby incorporated into this decision. And then on condition number one, the plans prepared by Matthew Eddy, they're dated August 18th of 2022, as revised on March 6th, 2023. Yeah, and that, just, was, that was condition one. Yeah, that's correct. As revised, what date, March? Six, Go ahead. Right, at 23. That's only sheet C 2.0, and that revision was just because of the new zoning. We had to update the zoning table. So, yeah, so it's just these two. Sure. Yeah. So the, um, my proposed draft conditions are um, modified as read into the uh, record by Mr. Schultz. Perfect. Thank you. Great. And a second on this motion? I'll second. Thank you, Michael. All those in favor? Mary? Aye. Ray? Aye. Bob? Aye. Tim? Aye. Michael? Aye. And myself, Steve Robichaud, votes aye. Matter passes. All right, thank Great. you very much thank for your you time. Very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Great night. Thank you. Next item this evening is general business related to a subdivision plan. Thanks, Steve. This is a general business item. This is a definitive subdivision plan of land on Old Stage Road and Parker Lane modification discussion. Excellent. Thank you, Mary. And, uh, at this time, we'd act, ask the applicant to come forward and provide an overview of the requested modification. Is, is, is your microphone on, Frank? Uh, there's a little button that says push to uh, right at the base of the microphone. Okay. How's that? Perfect, yeah, just restate your name if you don't mind. Uh, Frank Gallagher, um, Gallagher Engineering in Foxborough. And I'm here with the, the applicant, Bill Egan. Uh, and what we, um, the reason we're here is uh, to talk about uh, one more waiver. Uh, this is a plan that the planning board approved a couple months ago now, I think. Um, coming off of um, Parker Lane uh, and creating two two buildable lots, uh, and it was um, it was approved. Some waivers were granted, and um, we actually would like to discuss with you um, one more waiver. 
And that is, um, yeah, that's the plan I wanted to show. Um, it would be a waiver from section 801-35L, which is uh, discusses utilities and basically talks about um, underground uh, electric. We would like to do overhead electric for this project. And um, it's kind of hard to tell, but we did show it um, on this plan in red. Uh, it would come um, up, I guess, if you're traveling from Service Road down Parker Lane, it would uh, pretty much be on the right-hand side of the road. There's an existing utility pole right at the intersection, really, of Parker and Service Road. And we would like to go from there and put uh, three, three additional utility poles in that would take us all the way down to uh, what's shown as lot 2A, which is the furthest one uh, down the road. Um, and the, this is a waiver that uh, we're asking for, and I think, um, I mean, we're, we're feeling as if um, to try to maintain the rural character of this, um, this development, um, we think regular overhead electric and utility poles would would do that. And I, I submitted a letter dated March 21st that made this request. And with that letter, um, we submitted a photograph. And the photograph is of Pilot's Way, which is sort of what we're a little bit modeled after here. Um, We've looked at Pilot's Way, and that's that's kind of the look that we had hoped for here. And so if I don't know if the board has this, but I did attach this photograph with, with our waiver request, and you can see that they do have um, utility poles. And uh, that's the, and I, I mean, I guess it's up to you to determine, but... Um, we think that that's more in line with a rural character, and that's what we're after here. And so that is what has brought us back before you with this waiver request. Thank you very much. Appreciate that presentation. And um, you know, just to kind of summarize for the board, and Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, with a subdivision plan, um, when a change, when a modification comes before the board, the board needs to decide whether or not that qualifies as a minor or a major modification. A minor modification, uh, if we deem it so um, and want that to be approved, it can be done so with a simple letter, um, whereas a major modification um, does require us to kind of take a step back and open a public hearing to let the public make their uh, comments known. Um, so in this instance, we're going to um, you know just go to the board and hear what each has to say. I, I also think it would be beneficial um, for us to offer our thoughts, um, if we do believe it's a major, major modification, offer our thoughts of it, if it's something that we would be comfortable with, um, because if it's not, the applicant, I think, deserves to know that, um, so we don't, you know, certainly waste the applicant's time. All right. Um, Mary, would you like to lead off? Sure. Um, what's the reasoning why you're changing it? Um, just to try to... Um enhance, I guess, the rural character. Of, so only is for aesthetics? Is um, primarily aesthetics. I mean, I'll be honest, it's a cost benefit for us as well. Right. Um, so, but, but, you know, I think, I think we do have a valid case to say that the waiver could be granted and, um, and in doing so, in, you know, it would enhance the rural character of, of the development. Um, I don't have any questions other than the reasoning for doing this, but I also wondered if it's if it's gone through the process already. It seems to me that people should be able to comment on that. Just from my that's just my personal opinion. Sure. Yeah. I'll absolutely appreciate that. Um, Ray, your thoughts. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think, um, Mary, you. you Definitely, I, I concur with your 
thinking about re reopening the discussion to the public. Also, um, Pilot's Way was approved a while ago, right? It's, it's, uh, that's been... The uh, 70s. Yes. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do now uh, is to harden the infrastructure. And uh, as you know, the storms are not going to get any milder and they're not going to get any less frequent. Um, and I think that's part of the overall game plan. Um, and honestly, uh, um, I, I'm not sure how overhead wires contribute to a, you know, a, the rural nature other than um, out in the boondocks um, back when they've sprung wires above ground. Um, but I'm not sure that it, given that all things being equal, um, that would still happen um, if underground was available. I, I think that it, what you have is, is a, a nice place to, to, for the project. Uh, I, maybe it does cost a few bucks more to do it, but I think it, my own personal opinion is just that it would look prettier without the, without the wires for whatever that's worth. So I, I would think, Mr. Chairman, we might wanna, if we, we might wanna revisit this in a more public forum. Thank you, Ray. Um, I, I tend to agree. You know, I, I, I would consider it a, um, personally, a, a major modification based on, um, you know, how things are written and um, believe that if we did grant that additional waiver, we would want to hear from the um, public to see if there's any comments from the public. You know, my personal inclination um, is not to grant the waiver, um, you know, simply because I, I think that the, um, it's written the way it's written for a reason. Um, you know, personally, I think it, it limits the, disturbance to nature and the trees. Um, I, I believe it's a better view, a better streetscape, and it could even be argued that um, underground better represents the rural character. Um, and, you know, obviously, as Ray mentioned, hardening the infrastructure and, um, you know, there's a lot of maintenance that has to be done with above ground versus below ground. So, you know, that's, that's my kind of inclination is uh, that it's a major modification. If we do want to pursue it, we would want to send it to a public hearing. Um, but in general, I'm, I'm kind of generally opposed to it. Bob? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this came before us, I think, probably last fall or sometime in that time frame. And I think we had a couple of different sessions um, on the plan. As I recall, there was some discussion about uh, the width of the road, the thickness of the, um, the gravel that was going down there. I think there was something about a drain location of a drain in the area. <clears throat> Don't hold me to all those details, but I do recall there's, there was some discussion about the, um, about the nuts and bolts of the project and, and what was gonna be there. And one of the things that was part of the project is that the utilities were gonna be underground, which um, first of all was required uh, without a waiver, and second of all, um, it's required because uh, as Ray, I think it was Ray used the words hardening the infrastructure, um, and um, I agree with what Mary said with regard to the ability of the public to uh, be heard. So I do think it's a major change because it's something that the board considered, I think, essentially a benefit to the town when it approved the project, that being no waiver of that requirement so that the utilities would be underground. So I do think that it, it is a significant factor and I do think the public should be, have an opportunity to be heard. I agree with, uh, with uh, I think all three, Mary, Ray, and, um, and Steve suggested that I don't see how putting uh, telephone poles and overhead wires helps the rural character or the appearance of rural character. Uh, this clearly is rural, so it, it's not a question of just an appearance of rural. Um, but it seems to me that putting in uh, telephone poles and overhead wires is exactly the opposite of maintaining the rural character. What would be the most representative of rural character is no sign of infrastructure being constructed, such as power lines there. So I, I just think it, it doesn't, it impedes the, rural, the appearance of rural character, not in improving. The more important issue, however, is that because it's a rural area and it's heavily forested, 
the chance of a tree branch or a tree trunk coming down and taking out those wires is substantially greater than if the wires and the plumbing and everything else is, is buried. So I think there's a significant downside to the town to agree. So I think it is a major uh, modification. I think it does have to have a public hearing and in the absence of some com compelling reason not, not currently present, I would be opposed. Thank you, Bob. Tim? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I actually think I'm going to have a bit of a dissenting opinion on this, uh, just given my experience professionally dealing with Eversource for years and uh, knowing how that process can go and what it takes to uh, put utilities underground versus overhead. And sometimes it is very difficult. Sometimes it is uh, not so difficult. And you're kind of at the behest of um, Eversource, who's a very difficult partner to work with, especially their engineering department. Um, so, you know, I mean, I've tried to, on behalf of some of my clients and some of my projects, convert overhead wires uh, going down public ways and private ways and uh, put them underground. And sometimes it's one or two poles to eliminate. It's not that big of a deal. Sometimes, depending on how that infrastructure is set up, nothing to do with what you want to do. If there's a transformer uh, on that pole that you're trying to um, take your service line and go underground, um, it makes it a much, much more difficult task. So you end up having to rework two, three, four different telephone poles up the roads that nothing to do with your project at a great expense in a very long process. It takes one or two years probably to go through and get everything done. Um, so I am very pro underground utilities. I wish the Cape almost had them everywhere. We have some underground utilities in newer built neighborhoods and some downtown centers, um, but then some places not. That project that just came in front of us um, for the last one on North Street, they have overhead wires. Um, so thinking about this and how many, I think it's two building lots on this? Correct. Um, two building lots on a dirt gravel road, overhead wires, and it's coming off of the service road, which is all overhead. That's not that big of an impact for me. Um, that being said, I think it could still warrant a um, public hearing given the uh, abutters. You know, one thing that they think a dirt road's going to put in um, behind them. It's another thing that, oh, there's going to be some telephone poles or not. But uh, the telephone poles don't bother me, but I think it would warrant a um, public hearing. That's all. Great. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate those comments, that insight. Um, Michael? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, I also agree that this is a major modification. And, and I think that we should give the ability to the public to be heard. Um, that's, that's my point. Yeah, well said. So it does seem the board, um, you know, has a kind of consensus regu regarding a uh, major modification with a public hearing. And uh, Mary, would you like to make a motion to that effect? Yes, just give me a second here. Okay, so my motion for um, the general business item definitive subdivision plan of land on Old Stage Road and Park Lane modification discussion is um, the motion is to require um, a public hearing for the requested modification as stated um, that was last visited on March 21st, 2023 by Gallagher Engineering. Thank you, Mary. And a second? I'll second. I'll second. I'll give it to Ray. Ray second. And all those in favor? Mary? Aye. Ray? Aye. Bob? Aye. Tim? Aye. Michael? Aye. And myself, Steve Robichaud, votes aye. Thank you, Frank. Okay. We appreciate your time and your input very much. Thank you. Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Is that thing closed? Is it closed? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, moving along, uh, we're going to move to staff updates. going to discuss yep some some staff updates. Uh, Jim, you want to chat about the downtown Hyannis design guidelines? Absolutely. So uh, thank you for those who joined the the joint meeting of the the, the planning board and the Hyannis Historic uh, Commission in discussing the downtown Hyannis uh, design guidelines. Uh, so as you guys know, we're uh, the town is uh, is in receipt of a state grant uh, to update our downtown Hyannis design guidelines to essentially 
make a cohesive, unified uh, document for all of our design standards. This planning board has to design an, imp uh, an infrastructure improvement plan. Uh, the Historic Commission has their uh, design regulations. And now we also have our downtown zoning uh, uh, amendment that just passed uh, town council a few months ago, uh, which has a number of design features in it. And so what this uh, uh, downtown highness design guidelines um, uh, project is, is to build upon that uh, downtown zoning initiative uh, to enhance and, and uh, improve the zoning that's now in place, as well as those two other uh, jurisdictional areas. Uh, so we do have a few members of Historic that are, are volunteering to join us in a working group. Uh, it would be great if, if there was one or two members here that were interested in also uh, volunteering. I know at the, the joint meeting, we decided to wait till this meeting uh, to, to formally decide. Uh, what that would entail is really uh, looking through iterations of, uh, of, of potential uh, unification documents and, and providing some good guidance for staff and, and the other volunteers on, on what, what works at this board and what works at the commission uh, and what doesn't work uh, so that we can, you know, we can use a document that moves forward that, that will work uh, well for all, as well as what works for uh, the new zoning. Um, you know, not a lot of time commitment, though we are doing a, a site walk on uh, April 28th. Uh, that, is a, that is a pretty hefty commitment if interested, uh, though you don't need to attend the whole time. What, what we're thinking of is 11 to 5, uh, walking the different axis of, of our downtown historic area at least, um, and getting good examples of you know, what, what's, what's quality uh, design features that we want to maintain and what are, are things that we may want to push aside. Um, so with that being said, you wouldn't have to stay for the whole time. It would be, you know, maybe morning or an evening or, a, excuse me, a late afternoon. Uh, but also if you can't for, uh, come for the sidewalk, uh, you know, just w looking through iterations of, of uh, potential design guidelines uh, would be, you know, part of, the, part of the, the job of the working group to then bring back to this board uh, for your consideration. I have a Great. Question. Well said. I yes, have, Mary, go I have ahead. A question on that. Just for yeah. clarification, is it, you said it's the design guidelines um, for commercial, residential, everything? Yeah, so, yes. So, what we have in place right now is, um, is our downtown zoning uh, that just put in place. And what that includes is every, anything that's being permitted within the downtown area. There's, you know, site features like bringing it back up to the street. Uh, you know, fenestration requirements such as what uh, North Street was referring to. Okay. Uh, but then um, beyond that, we have our design and infrastructure plan, uh, which incorporates much of that same territory that, that essentially within our growth incentive zone. Uh, so all of Main Street, Barnstable Road, what have you. Um, so that's, that's barn, or the planning board's pur purview. But then we also have High Ennis Historic, uh, which, is, uh, which kept, uh, incorporates the waterfront, uh, as well as Main Street. So they have kind of almost separate guidelines that they're operating under. And a lot of it does kind of oh, luckily uh, speak the same language, but we're, we're hoping to kind of bridge that gap completely uh, and, and uh, enhance where, where uh, we can, because there are some notable uh, areas where maybe it's too broad or, or sometimes they, they do conflict. Uh, so yeah, so it's design guidelines for, um, you know, really our, our downtown core here of Hyannis. And, and so to help clarify, that is, these guidelines would be also used by the Historic Commission Planning Board, anybody in the, in the town for this geographic area. Right, so how it would um, practically work is you know, if, if let's say there's a redevelopment of, um, you know, one of these larger buildings here on Main Street, they would apply to site plan uh, review, uh, which would have strict requirements under our design and in infrastructure plan uh, for design characteristics. Um, and then they would ha also, if they need a special permit, come to the planning board where we can hold, uphold our design standards. And then lastly, uh, would go to historic and they would have th their set of design guidelines that should, at the end of the day, speak the same language. Uh, and also maybe more specific to what we, what we truly desire today. Great. 
Thank you. Great. Yeah, and just one comment first um, before Ray speaks is um, Jim or Karen, maybe you could email this out to the board and kind of reference the area so we can educate ourselves on current, you know, current language. Um, I remember I referenced this with the Walgreens right. when I kind of pushed for those shingles right. and, you know, a little of those, yeah. those features, you know, so um, it's, it's good that it's there because we can use it for so many things, mm -hmm. especially um, regulatory agreements. So great thing to lean on. Um, I, and I will just mention that I'm going to jump in on the 28th, um, but I'm not going to do the full six hours. I'm going to do like a either a morning or afternoon two-hour session. And uh, keep in mind, too, that y you don't even have to attend that if you can't. Um, Jim's happy to do kind of a recap um, afterwards, which I'd be happy to join as well. So nothing you ha we have to decide now, but if anybody wants to join, um, you know, uh, Historic has three, and we certainly could do two or three as well. So something to keep in mind, right? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, Jim, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I did, uh, I was at the joint meeting, uh, but essentially, uh, Mary, I, I, the, the thrust of what, or the gist of what um, came out of that meeting and, and um, some of the explanation that Jim has very diplomatically laid out um, uh, is, is that uh, essentially we, the planning board now has um, uh, enacted into statute a, a zoning ordinance that is very specific and, um, and gives would-be developers some very um, clear guidelines about what kinds of development would be welcomed. Um, my understanding is that the Historical Commission lacks that. It's kind of like, uh, let me take a look at it and um, I can kind of tell whether it's okay or not. Um, and uh, and that, that is the, um, the task at hand is to develop something, an equivalent of the zoning ordinance that the Planning Board put together so that the Historical Commission has something akin to that. Hopefully that is, uh, as Jim was saying, that not at odds with the, the zoning statute currently on the books. And, and quite frankly, um, uh, in these uh, times, uh, I think it, it behooves us to encourage um, our, our colleagues to do so because um, to have just sort of general what might be in, interpreted as vague guidelines, if somebody doesn't like, their, if, if their proposal is turned down and they don't like that, uh, it leaves one, or it leaves the town open for lit litigation. So uh, I think that's the real task at hand. Uh, please uh, correct me, Steve, if, uh, if I misheard. No, perfectly said, and uh, it's, it's gonna be, you know, I think uh, worthy effort to have that cohesiveness between us and the historic board. And now that we have our new modern form-based code um, to have new design standards to go with it, it's gonna put us in great position. So something I think is very exciting. Um, Bob or Tim, Michael, any comments? I'm all set. Thank you. And that was the um, that was the 28th. Uh, you said it was. What was the time on 28th again? Yep, we can we can send it around, but it's uh, from I believe 11 to 5. Okay, great. It's it's baby buggy accessible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is a walking tour, right? You can bring the stroller. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> exactly. All are welcome. Yeah. All are welcome. So. So yeah, we'll give it some thought. Um, Jim or Karen will send those current standards out so we can get our eyes on those, get familiar with them, which will definitely help us for future meetings. And if anyone wants to join, um, you know, please let Jim or Karen know. Um, Jim, would you like to, uh, before I move on, any more comments on that? Seeing none, we will continue on. Jim, LCP update. Absolutely, so the LCPC is moving along with uh, the grand vision for uh, the local comprehensive plan, we, uh, the, the, com the committee met just a few weeks ago, had a working session to, to begin to develop a framework for that vision, and they will meet again on May 11th to, uh, in, in an attempt to bring it all together and, and form that, that true vision that would uh, uh, continue on to the phase two, uh, which would come after to develop the full plan uh, in and of itself. Uh, in addition uh, of the vision, we have the existing conditions report uh, that's now online for the public uh, viewing and comment. Uh, that, uh, that report is posted on the barnstablelcp.com um, and is, is available for comment through April 24th. 
Uh, so we're taking any comments uh, and, and suggestions be, uh, until April 24th, which then will bring all those comments back to the LCPC for their consideration. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. We have three chapter one, uh, we have some correspondence, three chapter one, sorry, chapter 91 notices, 592 Pompanus at Roka to it, Layton, Boardwalk Pier, Rampy Float, 340 Hollage Hill Road, Barnstable, Matthias, Seasonal Walk and Pier, 592 Pompanus at Road, Barnstable, Layton, Boardwalk Pier, Kayak Rack, Marine Storage, Ramp and Float. Um, for matters not reasonably anticipated by the chair, I just wanted to, um, I, I wanted to ask uh, Karen if you could reach out to each board member. Um, I wanted us to just make sure that Karen has a um, kind of a quick reaction contact for each of the board members. I realize sometimes email may not be the best for people to see and respond quickly. Um, you know, I, I know that I communicate with staff via email, phone, text constantly. So if anyone would prefer a phone call or a text, um, our overall goal, um, myself, Karen, and Jim, is just to um, have kind of quicker reactions regarding um, attendance for meetings. Um, you know, for me, the best thing is when the agenda comes out on Thursday, let's all try to re respond to that email, letting Karen know if we're going to attend or not. Um, just doing that, obviously, you know, for staff's purposes, applicants' purposes, um, just so we know what we have coming up. All right. Um, on to approval of minutes. And uh, we're going to look for approval of the March 13th, 2023 draft minutes. Bob, did you want to make comments on, on this? Uh, sure, Mr. Chair. I, um, I have to say belatedly reviewed the minutes this afternoon, and I did see just a couple of uh, minor adjustments that I think uh, probably should be made. It's on page six of the draft minutes. Uh, at the top of the page between the, the two roll call votes on the dockside project, um, there's, there's two typed lines between the roll call votes and the last word on the second line is feet. And I think it should say uh, stories. So the line would read highest and best use would be 2.5 stories or 2.5 floors as opposed to 2.5 uh, feet. And then the other was, um, as you recall, we had two votes on the project. One was the first vote was to approve or disapprove the plan. And then the second one, after the, the, the board voted uh, to disapprove the proposal, there was a motion to not send the matter forward to the town council. On the second vote, uh, I actually voted aye rather than nay voting to not send it forward to the town council. Neither of these are terribly important, and frankly, I don't really uh, care of how accurate no, no, they are, I, but um, I probably should just put in the record. No, I, I'm, I'm glad you did, and very much appreciate your attention to detail on those. Um, anybody opposed to either of those amendments? No, as I have, Mr. Chairman, I actually circled that in, in dismay, because I saw that Bob had... There you go. Been, okay. Um, All right. A good eye to both of you. So I move that the um, minutes of March 13th, 2023, the draft minutes, are approved with the two modifications Bob just mentioned. And do we have a second? Second. second. Thank you. And all those in favor, Mary? Aye. Ray? Aye. Bob? Aye. Tim? Aye. Michael? Aye. And myself, Steve Robichaud, votes aye. Uh, future meetings, April 24th, 2023, 7 p.m., and May 8th, 2023, 7 p.m. Um, before we close, I just wanted to um, give a shout-out to Steve Costello, who has um, retired from this board. Um, Steve was a loyal public servant to the town of Barnstable for many, many years. And uh, I won't go on and on, but I will tell you about my first uh, time when I joined the board. Uh, I really knew almost nothing about what this board does. Um, or what town council does, I, I knew almost nothing. So um, my first assignment was to watch the videos and I watched Mary lead the board and uh, was struck by her poise, uh, her patience, her kindness, and uh, her professionalism in handling some wild, wild meetings. Um, <laughs> there was some very intense meetings. Um, so I was excited to you know, fall in line behind Mary um, however, I only ha had Mary as my chair for one meeting, and then um, Steve, Steve took over, and uh, you know, Steve ended up really being my mentor. Um, you know, 
just watching him and uh, watching him command a meeting and um, give everybody the chance to speak. Um, he was just very cordial, professional, you know, and um, it was a, a privilege working with him. And I think we all benefited from his time. And I also just wanted to state that I thought that he took a lot of um, unnecessary and unwarranted uh, flack, um, you know, a few times, and I don't believe any of that was deserved. Um, so I just wanted to thank Steve for his service to the town of Barnstable. And if anybody would like to make any comments, please do so. I I would I would just say the same thing. I think he was he spent a lot of time and effort supporting the town on the planning board. So um, he was he's my neighbor, but he was also an excellent. Uh, participant in the planning board. So we will miss him, uh, but I appreciate all of all the work that he's done. Well said, Mary. Thank you. And with that, uh, any final comments by uh, staff or board members before we have a motion to adjourn? Okay, seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. So, so moved. All right. Um, give it to Bob and Ray with the second. All those in favor? Mary? Aye. Ray? Aye. Bob? Aye. Tim? Aye. Michael and myself? Aye. Oh, sorry, Michael. And myself, Steve Robichaud, votes aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.